Good morning, Sherman fans. It's 8.23. It's Saturday, the 9th of November, 2013. It's FA Cup first round day. I'm Callum Jones, and I'll be talking you through what it's like to be undergo a day in the Halifax media team. Here's the second member of the media team. This is Aaron Crosby. All right, mate. How are you feeling this morning? Uh, a little tired, mate, but... Ready for the long journey ahead? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. We've made it to the welcome break with Ben Manning here, one of the media team members. Oh, ben. Hi. So we met at the Shea at 9am 9 9 this morning, yeah. Even. yeah. <laughs> um, and here we are in Leicester now, only about an hour to go. Uh, how are you feeling? It's nice to stretch the legs. Um, should be a good day. Um, Stadium MK, I yeah, think what you like about the franchise, shall we say. Um, should be a good game. Uh, if we were to say this is a cup final, we might be up, uh, overselling it slightly, because if we win, then <laughs> many more cup finals <laughs> yeah. to come. Um, but no, it should be good. Um, I'm on updates, so good to bring the uh, action to the website. So yeah, it should be, uh, should be good fun. He's Halifax Courier's very own Tom Scargill here, getting a quick pit me up. Tommy, excited for the game today? I am, yeah. This coffee revives me. I'll be very excited. Yeah, looking forward to it. Confident of a town win? I wouldn't say that. I'm looking forward to a good match. Though. I think we'll give it a good go. Um, can't see him winning, but... He's the Halifax legend, Adam Cheshire, here, just selecting a, a snack for the trip ahead. Cheshire, you feeling good about today? Yes, feeling very confident about today. Um, town through to the, the next round of the FA Cup, most definitely. Put your money on it. We've arrived in Milton oh, Keynes. Ben is really excited by the. Yeah, look, that's a. It's one of those um, skydiving things. Oh, yeah, there they are. The skydivers look a bit scared. I'm shaking like a dog that's here. It's amazing. So, Ben, you're, you're pretty impressed with Milton Keynes by the sounds of it. Well, <laughs> I'm as impressed as you can get with Milton Keynes. Um, tell you what, if you love roundabouts, this is the place to come and live. Um, come on, sell Milton, Milton Keynes to me, Ben. It's like the closest we get to America here, except <laughs> instead of using traffic lights for the blocks, um, these roundabouts. So here I am, outside the moon underwater, you can see. Let's go and see what the rest of the media team are up to. <coughs> so we've made it to the pub, where we found other members of the Halifax media team. First we've got Danny Toombs here. Danny, how are you, mate? Are you feeling good ahead of today's game? I am. I think it should be a good match. Um, you know, it's definitely come and things happen. Good fun indeed. Next to him is our survivor, <laughs> <laughs> the medical marvel, Nick Bollin. Hi, Nick. How are you doing today, mate? Yeah, much better. So, uh, I'm sure that the, the pop, uh, population of Alavax didn't sleep easy on Monday night. Can you confirm that you are up to 100% health again? I'm alive and kicking. I feel much better. And, uh, Sorry for you in the middle of Monday. It's, it's not a problem, we forgive you. And next to him is Josh Lawson. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. How are you feeling today? I'm here, just put Halifax on to win. Good. Do you think that that's going to happen today? 7-1. to one. That's not really answering the question, <laughs> <are we? laughs> Yeah, they'll win, they'll win. So, Callum, we've been hit with the news that uh, our commentary team may not make it by 3 o'clock. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Ben, you see, um, in the world, of journalism, uh, you have to be ready for setbacks and you know things that go wrong. Fortunately, we are, and we have six, seven other able people to do so because we can rotate things in our media team, and that's what's so good I feel about us. Um, of course, we're willing, uh, Aaron and Will, to hurry up, um, <laughs> but we're ready for anything in this team. So we have arrived at Stadium MK. It's a little bit bleak. Not going to lie to you. Uh, massive Asda there, I'll give you that. Woof, big. Yeah, that's, that's not even an Asda, that's a Walmart superstore. A Walmart superstore. Super um, I must say, 
first impressions of the ground, very nice. Obviously, uh, imperious, isn't it? When, when was it open, Ben? Was it 2004 or five? Somewhere around then. So it's a pretty new stand. It is obviously in relation to the conference premier, massive. Uh, here's some of the other lads here, just arrived. Um, next thing we do as a media team is sign in. Uh, hopefully escorted to a tea slash coffee making room. Um, and I have some tea slash coffee. Um, and then we will set up and see what everyone's gonna do. So yeah, there's a good superstore as well. Here we are in the Milton Keynes press box. Uh, very swanky actually, we've got the, uh, the TV on the wall, the pies over there. Oh, there's been a goal. Someone's just scored a goal here. That guy's all about it. Um, here we've got Josh Lawson. Josh, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the Milton Keynes press box? Fantastic. Up to the gantry now. All right, well, well you have fun, mate. I'll see you later. Just um, received some pre-match food here at Stadium MK. We've got ourselves a meat and potato pie, uh, which by all accounts is pretty decent. Uh, a cup of coffee here. Um, very decent. Interestingly enough, this is the, I imagine, the MK Don's laundry room, which you walk through in order to get to the gantry. Uh, not sure if there's a wash on yet. Here they are. Uh, yeah, this is it's pretty interesting. So here we are. Wow, at Stadium MK. What a sight this is. Wow. I'm not sure that the. Uh, that the footage can really show how impressive the stadium is, but take it from me, it is pretty impressive. Um, really good looking pitch, almost as good as the Shea as well. Um, I'm not expecting a full house here, but regardless, it will be certainly good. We're here with our two cameramen. Are we both doing cameras today, lads? Just me. No, Are you doing? TV right, so Josh is your non painting cameraman. Hopefully, so you're going to be recording the game, Josh. Not a bad view, really, is it? Better than Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, sh you shouldn't miss a kick here, really. No, it's class. I'm not going to. Be Gregory first goal. I'm telling you, yes. I'm going to miss that. So you can just a reminder: you can, if you've not already seen Josh's uh, full match highlights on Shaman Player from Sunday <laughs> on 5 p.m. Tom, you'll be providing the match commentary today. What uh, thoughts on the game? Well, We've not heard from you so far. You, you did travel separately. I will mention that. But yeah. your thoughts on the game <laughs> and the day? Cool one. Uh, but it's a, it's a phenomenal day, isn't it? Look at the stage, it's brilliant. But hoping for a Halifax win, it would be brilliant to commentate on a Halifax win here. Let's go through to the next round, we can get rid So here we are in the press box here at the Stadium MK. Uh, as you can see, again, the pitch looking absolutely spectacular, really. It's like Wembley. So it's just uh, it's now 2:33. Um, so 27 minutes until kickoff. Um, we're still without two of our media team members, Aaron Crosby and, and Will Jevons. Uh, we've actually come on the supporters bus. If you've not already seen this video, uh, go and see theirs because they uh, they took some interviews with the fans to see their thoughts out of this game. Um, they're not here yet, <laughs> which just says everything you need to know about um, what football can be like. So. We're motoring on without them, and hopefully they'll be here in the next 20 minutes or so, uh, so that we will have full match coverage. Otherwise, someone else will have to step in and do it equally as they do. As you can see now, Nick and Danny just going through the uh, pre-match radio show that we endeavour to bring you, uh, at least for every home game. Of, see, this is a special occasion, so they're bringing you that today. Um, hopefully, subscribe to Shaman Player, tune in early every home game to, to enjoy that. Um, as you can see on the pitch, having some warm-ups now. Shearman over there. Um, in black and red shorts, actually. Um, I'm not sure if this is a new away kit or, or anything like that, but Neil Aspin has been out and about. Have a look at the pitch. Um, and it's slowly filling up. As you can see, the, the Halifax following over here now is slowly building up. Sure, they're just getting some liquid refreshment before the game. Um, the stadium in general, considering there's only 20 minutes to kick off, it's, it's not exactly... People aren't exactly flooding in. Um, well, still waiting on our pre-match commentators anyway. Um, but we're not long to go to kick off and some nervous fans over there, I'd imagine, in the Halifax end. So here they are, better late than never. Aaron Crosby and Will Jevons. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Here you are at uh, 2.56. Yeah. 
How's it going? Quite That's fine. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Did you mean to say big thank you to our coach driver for the 45 minute stop? <laughs> really, really what we All coach drivers aside, did you enjoy the experience of being on the coach with the Shaman Faithful? It was good until we were somewhat sad. What's your, uh, what's your uh, reaction to the news that Megaphone Man has had his megaphone confiscated whilst coming into the stadium? Oh, that's an absolute disgrace. Yeah. Megaphone Man should be allowed his megaphone. Justice, justice for megaphone man. Otherwise, it's just a man, isn't it? Yeah. What is a man without his megaphone? Um, so, you two were scheduled to do uh, co-commentary on Shaman Play this afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, you will still be both doing it, but not on the... Uh... Oh, sorry very much. Uh, due to technical difficulties, it'll be not what we expected, but um, expecting a good game that you will be both commentating on. Score predictions with three minutes till kickoff. Aaron? Uh, I fancy a draw and get a back. Well, well let's go. I like that one. For the team, a rapturous reception from the Shaman Faithful over there. Led out by Danny Lowe. What an occasion for him and the rest of the Halibut lineup. which is great to see. We're minutes to kick off now, second. Let's go for a win. So here we are in half time at Stadium MK. Uh, quite brilliant goal from the striker. McLeod is, is the difference uh, in a frankly really good half in the show, man. I'm sad. Still alongside Ben Manning here. Hello, Ben. Hello, how are you? I'm all right. How did you find that first start? Very, very cold. Uh, my fingers are... Uh... Close up on the plate. fingers here. There they are. Southern uh, weather, Ben. You promised it would be yeah, hot. This is, this is too much north. Uh, I think they've uh, accommodated the visitors today. Um, but no, it was um, it's a hard one to gauge, really. Um, Halifax have stuck to their task. Um, and I think, as we've, as we've discussed, um, the goal that was scored by the cloud, I think it's a good reflection. Um, as a sports journalist, I should know that it's a reflection, but I think it's a good reflection. Um, uh, Will Jemmons in, the commentator. Here he is. Um, There's no coffee, wow. Um, this is the, the trials of being a sports journalist. There's no coffee. But, uh, that was the goal that anyway conceded. Uh, you can't really legislate for it. I think losing Ryan Thompson so early may well prove to be a key moment. Um, obviously, we've got Matt Pierce from Stoke, very aimed, and I'd say one of the best handlers at the, at the club. Uh, I think. I think that uh, they might come to struggle towards the end of this, uh, fitness. Uh, end of this game. Fitness. Not so much fitness, but here's some playing at right back. I'm not saying that he's not an accomplished performer, um, but it's obviously not his position. Um, also, I think something to watch out for will be uh, MK Don attacking down there right uh, and Halifax to left. He's got a lot of pace down there, so uh, it'll be a good test, certainly for the second half, for, uh, for Dan and those who uh, can keep up with something like that. As far as Roy Tolson is concerned, I think it was a, a clash of knees or something that, uh, that took him out of the game. So just hope he's all right. Yeah, and, and Will, you've commentated, all, as always, very ably on the first half, um, despite having the knowledge of your beloved West Bromwich Albion going behind at Stamford Bridge. You can go now, it's okay. Your thoughts on that half? Yeah, well, they've uh, emptied on to the, as you expect, the majority of the possession. It was just one of those where they stood off, stood off, and uh, they've had a couple of half chances at this time. They stood off too much, and they've the ball out for 25 yards, put it in the top corner. I like to feel that goal on that, but they really couldn't go a bit closer in truth. Yeah, and, f and final word here from our resident co commentator Aaron Crosby. What do you, what do you think Neil Aspin will be saying at half time? Well, I think he'll be. Relatively pleased, I mean, albeit they are driven by one goal to nil, but I certainly think they're in this game. If they can get another chance like the one Dan Gardner had, Gardner put it away, then I certainly think that they could really turn this game on its head and build a real upset. I certainly think the message at half time will be to, to keep frustrating the, the MK double side and also the possible catch on the break. Nick a replay, lads? Come on, Shane. So it's all over here, Stadium MK Town, unfortunate 4 1. MK Town. MK Town. <laughs> Unfortunately. We're in MK Town right now. Town unfortunately beaten 4-1, um, but by no means disgraced by Manny. No, it's, uh, 
I think they gave a good account of themselves. Um, oh, that sounded like I got stuck in my throat. <laughs> they gave a good account of themselves. Um, I think 4 1. Does it fairly reflect the, the I game? It, I think the score reflects the golfing class between League One and the school friend. However, I think on another day, it could have been. Missed chances. Yeah, I mean, Dan Gardner in particular, there was one that he was at the back post down there and he managed to. Uh, side foot the ball wide so if that had gone in that makes it 3-2 and who knows what happens but the the fourth goal certainly was one of those you're pushing for a, a yeah. second and maybe a third and... there you go what can you do who, no. wants win the, who wants to win the FA Cup here we are t by the tunnel area joining our resident broadcasting team Tom Nankaro and Joss Orson this is where the media team after the game do all the filming and interviews for Sherman player whether it be near or last bin or any of the stars Tom, how was your, uh, your little trip up there in the, the gantry? Cold. Cold. Yeah, but it was unfair. Uh, it was it was a fair result, but it was flattering on uh, MK Don's scoreline. Halifax could have scored more and just got him on the counter attack, didn't they? Yeah. Losing the penalty early on the second early on the second half didn't help, but not not much you can do really. No. It was good from. Pal. Josh, should the uh, the Shaman fans be looking forward to the the footage on on Shaman player from Sunday <laughs> well, at five pm? It's a massive improvement from Alfred. Huge, so they should be. There's some consolation, I suppose. They take that. They take the, the way they played then to the next game. Then. Worth watching Lee Gregory's goal again. Oh yeah, that was that, that appears to be a perfect toe poke. <laughs> I'm sure we love to hear that anyway, as we await the arrival yeah, of Neil Aspin. It was a good finish. They were, they were unlucky. It's just one of them, yeah. isn't it? Now we just wait, Neil. Neil's arrival. As you can see, Ben just conducting a post-match interview here with John Worthington, who came on early in the first half. Um, just spoke to Lois Maynard and myself, who was disappointed, but certainly admitted there was positive to take in the game. As you can see, now Ben was still here um, nearly an hour. An hour, is it? Uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes after full time. We're just, uh, just been waiting for Neil. We might be able to see through here. Um, just been doing some. Can we see? Let's have a look. Yep, there he is. Uh, just been doing some post match dignitaries, I'm sure. Um, I believe ITV are also here, obviously, for their highlight show tonight. Um, so I wonder what he'll be saying. But... Um, probably take heart from the performance. There are times where Halifax were very much in the game. Certainly no shame in losing the certainly four people will see the score and they're just a problem but the you know, actual fact in the fourth goal as, as John Wilkins said. Um, you know, it's when you're throwing the kitchen sink at MK Dons and it was just one of those you get caught short at the back. Um, they were two on one in MK Dons' favour, so you put put your money on foot in the league player putting that away. So you know, it's, it's hopefully he's, he's, he's just saying, you know, we've come here, we've given it a good go, but unfortunately yeah, wasn't enough. Classes, yeah. shame, so. He's not looking too disappointed, I will say that. Yeah. In a few weeks, I will get time to realize it's right before my eyes, and I can take. It's what I want to do. I am leaving, and this is starting to feel like. Made it. We're back here at the Shea Stadium. The time is 9.04, exactly 12 hours since we left. Hope you've enjoyed watching. It's been a pleasure, if not the most pleasurable result. Um, but I hope there's been a bit of an insight on what it's like to be part of the Halifax media team. I hope you enjoy what we cover for the rest of the year. From me, Callum Jones, have a great one. <laughs>